Okay, today we're going to go over um, how to actually um, take a sign from scratch and make one on the CNC router. We're going to take and put it into Aspire, which our Aspire software is over here. So you're going to double click on Aspire. You're going to open that up. Now, the main reason for this isn't to show you how to make the sign. The main reason for this is to actually pick a sign, make a sign, and actually how to actually fill that sign with either epoxy or paint so that the sign actually pops out and looks good. So whenever you're, whenever you're working on something, I know that we went over how to bring a file in, how to trace a file, how to do things. What we're going to do today is basically go over how to do a bitmap to a vector um, and a bitmap is, is a picture that is, um, that is brought in and then it's made out of pixelated dots and you're going to make lines out of it so that the router actually has something to follow. So what we're going to start with is we're going to, number one, we're going to find something that we want to make a sign out of. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into the internet and I thought that, uh, you know, as you, if you've ever been camping or anything like that before, you would see that, you know, there's a lot of people that put signs outside of their camp, or if you have a camp, they put a sign outside of the camp. And I was kind of scrolling through, and I thought this one was pretty fitting here because of the times, the original quarantine, which is camping, which means you're kind of all alone, you're out on your own. And But I thought for the, for the time of year, I thought this one was pretty fitting. So I clicked on that one there. And um, where did it go here now? Actually, let me go back um, and I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to save this image as. And when I do that, I want to make sure I just save it to your desktop or wherever you want. And you can put it right there and you can go to yes. And now it's going to come down here and it's also going to be on my desktop because that's where I saved it to. Once you do that, you can minimize this screen. You can open up your Aspire. And the first thing you want to do is to create a new file. So you'll come over here. You'll create a new file and that's going to open up. So what you want to do now is you want to figure out how how big the piece of wood is going to be that's actually going to go inside the router. So if you look at this, the if you want the overall sign to be 20 inches, now that's a big sign, but let's say you wanted it to be 20 inches. You don't want to put a 20 inch piece of wood inside the router. You have to give yourself a border, a little bit of a border so that the, when the router bit comes in, and, it, and the router circles around or whatever shape you have, that it doesn't extend beyond the limits of your of the piece of wood that you have. So I figured I'm gonna make a 20 inch sign. So what I did is I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go 21 inches on the width and 21 inches on the height. And then I'm gonna go over here and the thickness of my material, I'm gonna just say 0.75. Now, for purposes of going through the planer in our class, you want to make sure that you keep your project or the width of your project less than 24 so that when you cut partially the way through your material, you can plane it out the rest of the way and the sign will actually fall out of that wooden blank that you have. So we're going to say that our thickness is 0.75 and then we're just going to click on OK. Now that brings us into our tools over here. These are all of our drawing tools. And if you look over here, there's this one here, and I think most of you know how to bring this in, but we're just going to go over it again. There's this bird in the folder, if you see. That means you're going to bring a bitmap in. If you hover over it, it says import bitmap for tracing. So the picture that we just saved is a bitmap. It's not an actual lined drawing. So the router can only follow lines. It can't follow a bitmap. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on that, and you're gonna go into to your desktop and you're gonna click on wherever your image is. Mine is right here called the Camper Quarantine. And I bring that image in. Now, I know you look at this and you say, well, wait a minute, it's way too small. What am I gonna do? That's fine. Once you get this thing into an actual vector, which is a line, then you can create, make this thing any size that you want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go like this here. We're gonna highlight this and we are going to kind of just scroll into it so we can see. Now, if you can see real back, back here in the background so that you're not, you know, taking someone else's drawing, oftentimes they will put these lines in here so that you don't copy this. However, the CNC router or this software doesn't actually pick up the lightest lines. It only picks up your darker lines. 
So it usually won't pick up watermarks and things like that that people put on to a drawing. And these are just watermarks so that you can't use it. But I don't believe it's going to pick it up. So what we're going to do is if you come over here to where the actual bird is, so the bird was up, up here and the bird is now here, this says you're going to trace the bitmap and it's going to make it into vectors. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on that and it opens this up here. You want to make sure you click on black and white. That means it won't pick up your grays as much. So the, if there are watermarks in the back side of this, it won't pick them up quite so much. So click on black and white and we're going to go here and we're going to go preview. Now, what it did was just traced everything in there that was the difference between black and white. And now you go to preview and we're going to go down and hit apply. Now that we did that, if you double click on your picture and you can, there we go. If you double click on your picture, you can actually get rid of your picture. Just hit delete and that gets rid of the actual bitmap drawing that was behind the origin, the, the uh, vector drawing, which this is now made of lines and not made out of pixelated, uh, pixelated dots. So now that we come in like this, you say, well, wait a minute, well, it's way too small. So now we said that this overall was 21 inches and we were gonna make our sign 20 inches. So what we wanna do is we're gonna close this, we're gonna go back into our drawing tools we're going to highlight this circle. Let's scroll in a little bit so you can see. And you can go to, you can go up here to fit window to zoom to fit, and that'll put you in the middle. And then you come over here and you can set your selected object size. So if you look at this right now, it's only three inches by two and a half inches roughly. And we're going to go like this and we're going to keep our link and X and link Y together. And what that does is so that this doesn't get distorted. So if I just change, if I just change my X or just change my Y, it would stretch it out uh, one way or the other. It wouldn't stretch it out in both directions. But by keeping this link X and link Y together, what happens is you are able to, um, with the link X and links Y, what you're able to do is you can take these and it will stretch it and make it symmetrical to one another, your X and your Y at the same time. So you're going to go like this here. You're going to go to, um, let's just say, let's go with our bigger number, which is, let's just go 20 inches on that, which makes the height of it 17.86. So it linked the two of those and changed this one because you changed this. So then you hit apply and there's your your drawing now is as big as the platform that you're going to work within now the one thing that you have to remember when you go to do this is if you want this sign to be square that's fine but if you want this sign to be a circle and to be the same basically the same shape that this outside circle is you're going to want to shrink this just a little bit more so let's maybe go to 18 inches and hit apply and then what I'm going to do now is close that and I'm going to take a circle because I want this sign to be, I want it to be round. I don't want it to be a square. So then I'm going to go like this here and I'm going to say, well, wait a minute. I wanted a 20 inch sign. So now I can do a 20 inch circle. Make sure you have diameter, not radius. Click your diameter. You're going to go 20 inches. You're going to go to create and close. And now you're going to take this circle and you will center it. Whoops, there we go. You will circle, you will center that inside of this. So now when, if you look at this, because this tree over here is hanging out from this circle further than this one over here, you want to probably arrange this sign a little bit differently. If you can look the distance from here to here and the distance from here to here looks like it's a little bit off. So to make it look a little better, you can re-highlight your sign and right now the sign is in the middle of the of the um, of the project. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift that over just by using my right arrow key just a little bit so that it looks like it's more symmetrical so that the distance from here to here and from here to here and from here to here are all the same. So it looks like I could come down a little bit as well. Maybe if you scroll in, we'll just go down a little bit and. I'm just trying to make it, you know, so it doesn't look like it's it's off center. So I think that looks pretty good there. And we'll close that tab. 
And now it's time to actually set the toolpath for this, which it's not all that difficult. A lot of you have set toolpaths. What I like to cut the inside with is a V-bit. A V-bit is just a bit that looks like this here. It goes down and it goes over. So that V-bit, the point of this bit can actually go into these areas and cut that out. The wider the area is. So if you look at this part here, it's pretty wide. That means that's the deeper that that bit's gonna go. Whereas to real narrow areas, if you look right in here, where this is real narrow, where the tent hits this tree, it's not going to go quite as deep and, and especially areas like this here, where this bottom of this pine tree here, it would go very, very, it wouldn't go as deep, but on your very wide areas, like the top of this peak, it's going to go deep into that. So we'll show, we'll show you once we set the tool path. Um, we're going to delete this. So this don't become part of our tool path. We're going to refit our screen. So it's the same size. And now what we're going to do, is we're going to set this toolpath. In order to set a toolpath, it's on the opposite side of the drawing tab, and it's over here where toolpaths are. So you're going to click on your toolpath. You're going to click on V-carve, because that's what we want to do on the inside of this. We want to carve the inside of this script of this out with a V-bit. So we're going to click on V-carve. And if you look at this, the, um, the start depth is always zero. That means that's the top surface of the board. That's the face of the board. If you have a very, very deep area, like let's say this inside of this circle was real big and it wants to cut through your material, you would want to set your flat depth to a certain depth. Now, one inch wouldn't work for us. Remember, our board is only 0.75. So if you ever have to do a flat depth, you want to make sure your flat depth is less than your um, is less than the board thickness. So if I wanted to change this to 0.5. Now I don't have to do that because I don't think there's gonna be an area inside of this circle that is going to actually cut through. So I don't need a flat depth, but if you did and you had a big area, a big circle or something that was a very wide area, like so let's say for this example, but I don't think that's gonna propose a problem. But if it was very, very wide or a very wide letter or something like that, you would wanna set this flat depth and the way you know is if you go to set this and the flat depth is not chosen and you get, let's say I just chose this outside circle and wanted to do a V carve. That means it would V carve this entire thing and it would probably cut through. But when you go to do it, it will warn you and tell you that you're going to cut through your material. So then you can actually go back. You can set a flat depth and you can set that to be less than the actual material thickness. So once we do that, we're not going to have a flat depth. Our start depth is going to be zero. You don't have to worry about any of this. The only thing I'm going to do is go into select my tool and I go into V bits. Um, where is it? That's millimeters. Let's see. There we go. So what I want is I'm going to choose a half inch V bit. That's your, a pretty common size. When you get into 1.25, that's a V bit that's, that's, very large. So a half inch V-bit is normally what you want to use. A quarter, You could use a quarter inch V-bit. It wouldn't change it much, but we're going to go with a 0.5 V-bit and we're going to click on OK. Whoops. If you want, if you look at this little uh, push pin up here, you can actually lock this screen out so that you don't have to continue. Every time if you go away from this, it'll, um, it'll fly back in like it did. But if you come up here and you hit this push pin, It'll lock the screen out just like it locks the drawing tools out. Right now, this is pinned, so I can actually take this and get rid of that and keep just my my um, my V carve or my toolpath tab open. So once we do that, you're going to come over here, and the rest of the stuff you don't really have to mess with. It knows that your material thickness is 0.75. And it is going to cut as deep as it possibly can to make your project look the best that it can for the thickness of your material. So you're going to go like this here. You're going to go to calculate. Whoops, I did forgot to select the, uh, the drawing. Select your drawing, then hit calculate. And that's what it's going to do. This is the path that that tool path is going to run. This is the path that the router is going to run, which it doesn't look like much right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to preview all tool paths over here. And when you do that, this is what you're gonna end up with. So the original quarantine, it comes in. And like I said, in certain areas, it's gonna go deeper than it did in others. And we were using this as a reference that this was a wider spot than some of the other spots. And now if you look at this, 
you can see, let me scroll out and scroll in. You can see that if you look down in this bottom right hand corner, this Z gives you the depth that you are in a specific area. So when you hold your cursor over a specific area of the drawing, it's going to tell you exactly how deep that that bit's going to go. And when I use this as a reference, if you if I hold my bit right here, you can see that it's cutting down almost 0.2 inches. Where on more narrow areas, when we said down here, there's going to be narrower areas that you're not going to get into, like this tree. Um, let's say this bird here. It's only going to go down almost a sixteenth of an inch because it's a narrower area where this is a wider area. So it's going to go deeper. And this here is almost a quarter inch that it's going to go deep. So just to give you kind of a reference on how that works, um, you know, the wider the areas, the deeper the bit goes. And you can see that down here at the bottom of the screen where the Z was. Um, so the next thing you want to do is we, so we have our, this is our, the artwork inside of it. Now we want to cut that circle out. So we want to go back to new over here up at the top and we want to select our outside circle. We want to close this current toolpath that we're in and we want to take this profile toolpath here and click on it. When we do that, we want this to cut all the way through so we're going to put a board under it or we don't plane our material to actually three quarters we keep it thicker like it's seven eighths or one inch and then we allow that bit to cut down 0.75 inches so when we come over here and this is at 0.75 that's the cut depth okay the start depth is zero that's the top of the board and the cut depth is 0.75 now what you want to do is you want to select a quarter inch end mill. Usually it is defaulted to the last tool that you've selected. So the last tool that I have programmed on this for a 2D profile was this. So I don't have to change that. And the what you want to do here, if you hit edit passes, it, what this does is it depends on how deep you want each pass to go. You don't want to take your bit and plunge it all the way through your material and have it cut. Normally, I usually, for a quarter inch bit, I go half the um, diameter of the bit. So because I have a quarter inch bit, I am able to cut down 0.125, which is an eighth of an inch each time. You can click on OK, and that says it's going to take six passes to cut this out. So if the bit started here, it would go around this circle six different times. It would go down an eighth, then a quarter, then three eighths, then a half then five eighths and then three quarters. So it would take six different revolutions around here before it got to the depth of three quarter. Once you do that, you're going to um, scroll down here and you're going to click on calculate. Okay, so then once it calculates, it, this is the path that it's gonna take. And if you scroll in, you can see that each one of these blue lines, there should be six of them because that means it's gonna cut six different times. It's gonna cut down, like we said, an eighth, a quarter, three eighths, half, five eighths, and, and three quarter. Um, then we're gonna to go to preview all toolpath. And you can see from the drawing if you, that it cut through because we said that our material was 0.75 and we set our depth to 0.75. Now, if you put a three quarter inch piece of material on the router, you would want to make sure that underneath of this board where you can see that it cut through that there would be a piece of like a sub piece of plywood that it wouldn't cut into the router table if you double click on a piece of this that is not part of the drawing now it will make it disappear so now it shows you what the actual sign is going to look like now what what we're really here for is to actually color this so there's two ways that you can color the inside of this after you take it out of the router the first way is to paint all of this and then send it through the planer and it would take off all the surface but, but where the paint has gone into the recessed areas and then your sign would pop. So this is what it would look like if you did that. So if I go to Toolpath Color and I go to pick a color on that, let's say, I don't know, let's go a camping green and I go to set all, it's going to show you what it would look like if you paint it and then ran it through the planer. Um, this would also be what it would look like is if you took and filled this color, okay, with, um, if you filled it with epoxy, and that's going to be the second thing that I show you guys how to do. Number one, we're going to show you how to paint a sign, 
And number two, we're going to show you how to fill it one with epoxy. You wouldn't do both because the epoxy goes level with the surface, whereas the paint recesses in. So there's two different ways to do it. But that's basically what I, what um, what we're going to kind of go through and teach you guys how to do uh, as we move throughout the week and even into next week. I want to show you how to do this. So when you have free minutes and free time, you know, for even those of you that are in Wood Tech 3 that are moving into or Wood Tech 3 that came from Wood Tech 2, most of you designed a clock last year, but were unable to cut it because the year came to an abrupt end. So this is what your clock, you could actually do to your clock. You could paint this, send it through the planer, and your, you know, your project would be done. But uh, I just wanted to go over that with you. I want you to have a general concept on how you actually bring a drawing in, how you can take it from a bitmap to a vector, how you set your V-carve, and then how you actually cut the outside circle out. Now you can see if you had to sell this product to somebody, you could take and print this out and say, this is exactly what your sign's going to look like. And that way there, the person has a general idea on what they're purchasing from you. So if you, you know, you went into business and making signs, let's say it was an Etsy business before you actually sold or created or made this sign, you could send this to them and you could get their signature and approval that that's what they wanted. And that's, you know, that way there that Whatever you see on this toolpath preview, that's exactly what your product is going to look like when you're done. So that's what just a general idea on how this works. And I just wanted you to have the concept of it. So we will reconvene and we'll, we'll talk about this uh, as we get into school and start working live again.